up guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be talking about how to make your very own Swift package so that you can use it in your own projects. Or if you want to let anyone else use it, they can use it too. Today we're going to be focusing on specifically how to create a Swift package using Xcode, how to upload that to GitHub, and how to use that Swift package in another project. So. Let's get started. All right, so first and foremost, we're going to be opening up Xcode. So let's go Xcode, create a new Xcode project. We're going to go to multi-platform here and click Swift package. This is exactly what we want. Next, you're going to go ahead, create it. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as, say, my uh, Swift package. Then let's go ahead and save it to your desired destination. And once you have the package created, you can see this package.swift, there's sources, you can see my Swift package.swift, it has basically nothing in it. And then we also have tests. So you can write some tests for the stuff that you are building here. Uh, this is actually very helpful when building packages to write some tests alongside it because you can't really test directly from the Swift package itself. You need a test within an example that you create uh, outside of the Swift package. And so if you want to avoid, you know, constantly pushing up to GitHub, pulling it from GitHub over and over again to test packages, this is very helpful for that. But let's talk a little bit about these package.swift. So first off, you can see up here is the Swift tools version. Now some dependencies, some different ways of organizing the package require a different Swift package, Swift tools version. And you can see that this is kind of commented out here, but actually if you do change this, it'll actually change the package itself and it might add functionality or take away functionality accordingly. 5.3 is uh, a good version to start out with. Here you can have the name of your package. Products here, this is basically like what kind of library you want to create, what kind of name, the targets to it. If you want to add, say, another library on top of this that goes specifically towards the test, you could add that there, so on and so forth. But for now, I, I generally just leave this alone because I'm going to be shipping out the Swift package itself. Now, the dependencies here is really important. Say you want to use a package that this package depends upon as it says right there, uh, you can go ahead and let's say we want to use Starscream, for example, which is a WebSocket thing. Uh, so if we look up the Swift Package Manager here, we just copy and paste this URL into dot .package. We have the URL, and then it's required from, uh, let's say, 4.0. We hit command S and let's see, it looks like something went wrong. It said invalid semantic version 4.0. It says major version four, but apparently that is wrong. So it's 3.1.1 actually. So hit command S and there you go. It fetches the dependency automatically and there you have it. So now you actually have this package attached to your product, but still in order to use it, we're gonna have to go down here to the dependencies and we're going to have to, have to just write star scream like so. And now if we were to go into my package.swift, we can say import star scream and it'll find it. If you didn't have that dependency there, it would throw an error your way. And also to build and run, you can select pretty much any device on here. I generally go for one of the iOS devices. Um, that way, if you build and run, it actually builds and runs it for the iPhone, but it doesn't run it in the simulator. And so it just kind of like tests whether or not it's going to work. As you can see, Starscream is not imported anymore, and therefore we just need to add that back. Hit Command S to save again. It should recognize that the module is there. And if it doesn't recognize it, sometimes you have to go product, clean build folder, run it again, and you'll notice that it's, it's working fine now. And just how things are. And then of course for targets here, these are really important. So you have the test target and the target itself. So the target itself is what's actually going to be loaded up into the library, as we can see here. And so with this, not only do you have to declare, say, the name, the dependencies, you're also going to say where this target is pulling from. In our case, we want to go ahead and say the path is going to be our sources. And now anything inside of our sources folder will actually be included inside of the target itself. Now you can of course change this to whatever you want. So if you wanted sources slash uh, one thing specifically, my Swift package, you can do that as well. But for us, we're gonna be using sources. Now let's go ahead and get started with just a basic uh, Swift UI view, for instance. So let's say file, this is going to be Swift UI view dot Swift. We're going to import Swift UI, and then we're going to say struct uh, Swift UI view colon view. Then we save our body some view. And then inside of here, let's just include some text saying this is the 
a Swift UI view from the package. So now, if we hit Command S, we save this, we should be able to actually use this view inside of another project. So let's go ahead and test this out. But first, you can see that text is only available in iOS 13 or newer. It'll give this uh, in closing structure quite a bit. So you need to specifically say, if it's available, then we're going to provide the Swift UI view. If not, uh, it's not going to work for everyone. This is going to be a constant thing that you're going to have to put anywhere that it gives you this error. Generally, if you put it on outside of the structure, it'll include anything and everything inside of the structure. Um, if you put it right here, for example, now this is only going to be available inside of iOS 13. But say, for example, that other functions inside of the SwiftUI view that can be utilized at a lower iOS version, uh, you can keep those separated as well, just depending as to where you put this at available. In our case, I'm just going to throw everything inside of it. So hit Command S again, build and run, make sure that everything's running smoothly and it seems to be going well. So let's go ahead and upload this to GitHub. I generally prefer using the GitHub desktop. If you like using the terminal, that's up to you. But just click and drag to, uh, our MySwift package. We'll add the repository. We'll upload it, say update, commit to main, and publish repository. So I'll just call this MySwift package. Our description will say a Swift package. And then for the organization, we can keep that as whatever we want, but there's none for mine. So publish the repository. And now we should be able to see this inside of our GitHub. So here, if I go to my repositories, you should be able to see my Swift package. Now, in order to use this Swift package, we're first going to just grab this URL here. And then let's go ahead and say file new project and then we're going to create an application and we'll say my swift package example and once you have it created this is when we can start importing the package now there is a way to keep these all a little bit better organized so if you have my swift package here and my swift package example you don't want these to be in different repositories so what we're going to be doing we're going to go in here we're going to say new folder we'll call this example and then we'll just take all of the contents inside of the my Swift package example and pluck that right into the example itself. And now we can see all of those files right there and we can upload those with our repository as well. So not only do you have, you know, our Swift package, if I were to upload this, commit, push, and then let's reload this we should be able to see our example in there as well. And that's how you can keep it a little bit more neatly organized, right? So now let's actually use this Swift package. So now we have our example, so let's open up our example project here. And now we're going to say file, Swift packages, add package dependency, in the which we're going to go to GitHub and just copy and paste this right here into here. And then we're going to say branch main next, and then here you can see the package. If you have different libraries or different, you know, as we were talking about earlier, different targets, libraries here, we're focusing on this library. But if you add more libraries, there you can select the different libraries through here as well. Let's go ahead and finish that up. And now we can start using it. And you can see that it loads alongside it the MySwift package, the Starscream, and also the other dependency associated with Starscream. Now, finally, if I wanted to use this view that I created inside of Swift, inside of my package, all I would need to do is let's go back over here. We say iOS, uh, iPhone 12 Pro, and then we have our example app. If I want to just change this window group real quick, we can put in our Swift UI view. And then, of course, we need to import our uh, dependency. So we're going to say import our my Swift package. Now if we hit Command S, build and run that. Now this is actually going to throw us an error. As you can see, it says Swift UI view initializer is inaccessible due to an internal protection level. So in order to fix this, we actually need to declare that both the structure, you know, the, the body here and everything is actually going to be public, that someone else can actually use this view inside of their own application. So we're going to say public var, and then also we need to say public init. Uh, because we actually need a uh, public initializer for people to use as well. And so now if we were to go back over to GitHub here, let's update it. 
commit to main, push, head back over to our application and say uh, Swift packages update to latest package versions again, and then finally build and run this. We should be able to see that the build succeeds. Now we go back over here to our project and we should be able to see that text. Huzzah! Now let's say I want to add an image to this. So this is also where things get a little bit more confusing. So in order to do so, we're going to go back over here to our sources inside of our actual package itself and not the example. Uh, so let's go here. And let's say new file, we'll add an asset catalog. And we'll just say media.xe assets, works fine for me. In the which we're going to have to add an image. Let's use our star screen image. And then in order to actually use this image, let's go ahead and organize our folders a little bit. So I'll have like say resources, we have our views. And I'm doing this for a reason to show off. If we go back over to our package.swift, we're going to say comma at the end of this path here, we're gonna say resources. And then we're gonna add a couple thing resources here. So we're gonna say dot process in which the path that we're going to process is going to be resources slash media.xc assets. And so now when we do build and run this, let's build and run this real quick, it says the build has succeeded. And if we want to actually reference the image now, we should be able to. So if we say image with the name of say star screen, it says build succeeded. So hopefully everything is working properly. Let's say update, commit to main, push origin, and then update. So building and running this again, we should be able to see an image. And this is actually an issue here. So it says no image star screen. So what this is looking for is it's saying that we're looking in the local asset catalog. So not only do you have to keep in mind that the resources are actually being referenced inside of our package.swift, you need to make sure that the views themselves are referencing the local XE assets and not the one inside of the application. Because you would notice that if I were to put this right in here, we build and run this again, it works. But that's the issue. It only works when it's referenced locally. And we do not want that. We want it to be connected directly through the application. So if we go back over here to our Swift UI view, in order to make this image here reference not the local assets, but the assets inside of our package itself, we're going to first and foremost make this look for a UI image. So we're going to say UI image, the UI image, open parentheses, and then we're going to want the one that says specifically named in and com and with. So for the named here, we already know the name, so it's going to be star screen. In the bundle, this is going to be dot module. And so this is dot module right here is the main thing that we're looking for because this is going to look for things specifically in this package. And then with the configuration, we're going to set that to nil. Now, if we were to build and run this again, let's just make sure. Oh, and we need to unwrap this. We know we have this image in there, so there's really no issue in doing this. And then finally, we're going to commit on everything, but I'm just going to make this dot resizable. And let's give it a frame uh, width and height of 100, like so. And then an aspect ratio of dot fit. That way we just have the image that looks a little bit nicer and not filling up the entire screen like we have right here. And then now if we were to update and then build and run, we should get a nicer looking image and everything should be working properly even though we don't have star scream inside of our local assets anymore. And so that's, uh, that's basically it. If you have other sources as well, if you have other resources such as media files or the mp3s or anything like that, you're going to have to use the resources inside of the package.swift as well. So that is something to keep in mind when creating a package. And there you guys have it. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what else you would like to see in the future. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you in the next one.